The AMT 1953 Ford pickup truck coming up next on Monster Hobbies. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again model car builders. Are you ready for another amazing unboxing as today we are going to pull the lid off the AMT 1953 Ford pickup truck. Now this is amazing model kit going all the way back to around 1961, 1962-ish when it was part of the AMT Trophy Series. So without further ado, let's rip the lid off this thing and see what's in the box. And now we go back to the 1950s as we look at this amazing AMT Trophy Series 3-in-1 Ford Custom Pickup Truck. And now round two has brought in a new match and paint guide very similar to the Revell way of doing things. You get a custom engine with eight carburetors uh, set up as a fuel injection. You can build this as a beautiful show truck. Operating tailgate and hood, authentic 125th scale, and of course you can build it as a 3-in-1 stock, custom, or service. Now this is a cool kit. This was originally released back around 1961-62, somewhere in there. And it's got uh, styling cues by George Barris, Gene Winfield, Dean Jeffries, and all the other cool cats at AMT from back in the day, which has carried through to our modern era. And uh, round two has re-released this in the original packaging, which is some very beautiful artwork on here. As you can see, we've got our custom pickup truck on the front. This is the one with the Wildcat grill, I do believe built by George Barris. If we turn it up this way, you will see the Noah's Ark welding. Get it? Noah's Ark? Aha! Okay, anyway, and you can see the tools in the back here. The oxyacetylene tanks for welding. It says, includes detailed welding rig, service decals, tool set, and air horns at the top. <laughs> nano, nano. Anyway, build it as a service truck. And then, of course, you got that part of it. If we turn it up this way, okay, you can see it says build it stock, and they show this very nice white Ford pickup truck. That's on the end of the box. And if we turn this way on the box, you will say, see that it says bonus features kit includes retooled vintage custom wheel caps and firestone deluxe champion two in one tires with pad printed wide white walls on one side and engraved detail on the other side only from the cats at amt round two has been very good at re-releasing the original feel of these model kits which is really cool because they also show the beautifully detailed authentic 125th scale parts for stock custom and service as you can see here you get your tools your welding tanks a two-way radio custom rear fenders these ones are similar to the chevy step side back in the day except they have indentations that are sort of like 57 corvette style you get a pleated tonneau cover real rear rolled pan <laughs> Fire extinguishers, side mirrors, custom wheel caps, custom lake pipes, custom steering wheel, cab lights, custom tail lights, stock custom grills, two sets of custom grills, air horns, a floor shift, radiator, front and rear springs, front roll pan, custom engine, a stock engine, custom engine you can put on dragster style injector tubes. You get a jack in there, many other great parts. And again, turning the box this way, the same as on the other end. And now we can open up the lid of this thing and check out what's in the box. So bear with me for a minute. Okay, we'll just throw that to the side. <laughs> and we're gonna take out our instruction sheet. And here is that Ford, uh, paint match guide so these have of course all the letters so black is a flat black is b semi gloss black c and on it goes so very helpful in building our models so i will just remove the parts whoops for a minute and then we'll 
bring our instruction sheet here. Now this folds out, but I mean the artwork on here is very beautiful. There's your stock version, the service version, and the custom. Faithful reproduction of the original instructions. So now I know this picks up quite a bit on the camera. So I'll try to do this a little bit quietly. <laughs> okay. Undo our creases here. Okay, so we get to image number one, and I'll just zoom in. There. So, the first image we have here is of our stock flathead Ford V8 engine, which was a pretty powerful and big cubic inch displacement version of the Ford flathead. And as you can see, it says uh, exhaust manifold, air cleaner, carburetor, and all the rest. So you really get a good understanding of what components build up an engine, with the exception, of course, of pistons, <laughs> but that's okay. And then over on our custom engine here, this is a DeSoto Fire Dome, which was a popular choice back in the 60s for more horsepower into your truck. And you notice something interesting. It's got a dual split water hose. This is so that you can use the stock radiator because if you look here, you have the water hoses of your flathead V8 which go on either side of the flathead. So over here on the custom, those two um, hoses there and then they go into a T channel and then down to the center is an adapting piece to make it fit the stock radiator. So you get a choice of either eight single barrel carburetors or the custom fuel injection bits here. So I'm gonna build this model for a Coca-Cola display actually because the Coke version that came out of this truck is uh, brand new from AMT. There'll be a what's in the box of that one. But there's enough decals in there to build three of these with Coke logos. So I'm gonna build one with the four carburetors, with the injectors, and the flathead Ford. So anyway, look for that project coming soon. Now let's look at our next panel in this. So here we have our wheels, and as you can see, we get into a four-piece assembly. Now, you can either use the stock Ford hubcaps or switch them out for these custom spinner hubcaps, which are reintroduced back into this from the 1962 release. Now you'll notice on your parts tree coming up, there are some Baby Moon hubcaps. We'll get into that little discussion later. Anyway, there's two-in-one tires. It says these Firestone Deluxe Champion tires feature engraved details on one side and wide white wall styling on the other side. And then there's our paint callouts, which match with our sheet that they gave us in the kit. So that's pretty cool. Cool cajool. And now we're looking at the frame here. The amazing Ford frame, really tough and durable. You can see the high side rails. Anyway, so you get rear bumper brackets on here, which you can omit for the custom version because that has a rolled pans. You have a front axle and tie rods, front and rear leaf springs. The rear ones have the higher buttons on them, which will drop into your rear axle through some holes. There's your rear shock absorbers going on there, your drive shaft. You get these additional mufflers for a custom version. And then, of course, you can use these scavenger pipes. And there's our bent up stock tailpipe that goes up and around the uh, rear axle. Here we have our spare tire mounting on the back with the spare tire bracket, which goes into the hole and over our wheel assembly. <laughs> Okay, getting into the interior here. You've got this beautifully, I always loved the floor mat on this thing. I've built three, actually, yeah, three of these trucks already. And one of the flip noses, or maybe two. I don't know, I just love this 53 Ford. It's a great one. The uh, flip nose is a MPC kit, which sometimes flies under the AMT banner. It's a little bit strange, but anyway. Okay, so you get a bench seat in here, this beautiful floor mat with the 
that L-shaped um, rubber mat <laughs> texturing, I guess. You get your floor pedals. There's the optional stock or custom, pardon me, floor shift. And you can see the little C there. That means it's chrome plated. And you can paint the ball on the end and the rubber mat down there. Here's the front bumper brackets and you'll notice it says for stock and service only. Then uh, you put on your rear brake drums here and your front shock absorbers. And then you're ready to roll once you put your wheels through it. Okay, and then we get to the final panel on this page. Some instructions have been in over at the top here off camera. Okay. So we get the old metal hood clip in here. Now, in the past I've tried to attach these underneath and they'll hold your hood on until you open it and then they go patwing. So I don't know, I never really use them. I'm not sure, if have any of you guys used this metal clip to any success? If so, please write in the comments below and tell me how you got it from springing off of there. Anyway, okay, moving along. So we got our mirror, we've got a speaker for the custom version. Um, then our instrument panel is going to pop underneath there. The windows actually pop into place really nicely. Okay, here's our dashboard going together. So you got your nice dashboard with the face and it's telling you how to paint it all. The steering column, the column shift lever. Now this is for the stock version. If you're using the custom with the floor shift, uh, you don't need this in here. You got your two-way radio. That would be your CB radio. Breaker, breaker, good buddy. Okay, anyway. Uh, there's the stock steering wheel and then the custom one. And they, like in this era, in the 60s, they wanted the cars to have sort of a jet aircraft feel. So they cut off the top ring and the bottom ring of the steering wheel and leave these side grips. So it's sort of like um, flying the controls of a jet airliner. That was their idea. So this looks a little deceiving here. This almost looks like a separate piece for the hood emblem. You paint it up and glue it on, but they're actually referring to, it's molded into the hood as we'll see when we look in our parts. This is actually referring to how you paint it, and they're just giving you an arrow, like paint it like this, the item is there. Okay, anyway, there's our horn and it will drop in on the firewall somewhere. Uh, there is a separate firewall that glues in here a radiator and uh, again all the components going up into the cab underneath. So now I'm going to just flip this over where we get to see the body assembly. Now I made a mistake in the Coca-Cola review. I was calling these bumpers, they're fenders. I don't know what was happening with my mind at that point. You know making videos all this time your mind starts to go. Anyway. <laughs> All right, some humor. Okay, so we have our uh, tailgate, and these are, sorry, our pickup box. Woo! Okay, I'm goofing this video up. Anyway, we got our pickup box here, and there's our bumper brackets with the stock bumper going on the back. The tailgate here has Ford um, stamped into it. It's actually pretty accurate. It's got the, of course, the sunken in part here, and when you flip it closed, it has the raised letters on the other side. These fit into the side support brackets, which glue onto the side of your pickup box. There's a hole at the bottom here, and another little hole, and then there's these little uh, two prongs. On your tailgate, there's two um, little plastic rods that stick out here, and then, of course, the the one for the uh, hinge, which will pop through it in these bottoms. So you glue one of these on the side, slip your tailgate in, then glue the other one and hold this thing up until the glue dries on there and there, and then your tailgate will open and close. Although you can glue it down with these plastic chains that hook in. Now here you get your license, or your taillight brackets, your license plate housing, and your license plate, which is a decal. I'm showing you how that goes together. There's a stock gas cap here, and it's all chrome, but you'll need to paint the spout part underneath the cap as either body color or black. You have to look that up on the internet. I can't quite remember 
what it's supposed to be like. Well, it says C there. So C is semi-gloss black. Okay, there we go. Good thing I had this on the side here off camera. Okay, anyway. You get your bigger tail light or your headlights. Woo. Yeah, your stock grill. This is chrome plated, although I have seen some trucks and photographs where this is white. And it, that looks quite nice actually in there. There's a front bumper here. Your wheels are going on to these metal axles that you slip through. You can enlarge the hole a little bit so that your wheels will spin nice and free if they get jammed up. So that's our stock version of the truck. So now we just move our instruction sheet down and here we have the service truck edition. This one's nice. I, I've built one of these in the past. You get a special service bumper with holes in it so you can, you know, wrap chains in here and pull other cars or whatever goes on with a bumper with holes in it. Uh, the stock four tailgate again. Now this time around, this little hole at the bottom is for gluing on this additional tail light because the stock version only had it on the one side. This was sort of in an era before turn signals were really starting to happen. So these would just be lit up indicator lights that there's a back end of a vehicle. Anyway, you get these nice air horns. You get these great cab lights on here. The West Coast style mirrors. Uh, there's your pickup box going on there and the stock rear fenders again and then here we get all these different tools there's a hammer a screwdriver a pair of pliers and a few different wrenches and then a fire extinguisher welding tanks with a cutting torch now if you have some uh, little wires or whatever you can wrap them up on the sides here and attach to the cutting torch Remember that it's supposed to be red and green off of these. Then you get your jack with, of course, a jack handle uh, with a crank in it. So that, oh, and then these overriders here. They're chrome front nerfs. Okay, so that takes care of the service truck. And now we get into the custom. So let's just make a little bit of noise. <laughs> Okay, so the custom version, this one has the Wildcat grill, which was, I do believe this one is designed by George Barris. And then there's this tube grill, and it has the canted front headlights, which was popular in around 1962. This is sort of styled off of the Chrysler 300s of that era. So that was sort of the hip and happening thing at the time. Here we have some mercury tail lights, which you can glue onto the stock rear fenders for one version of the custom. And then these custom rear fenders are again like your 1955 Chevy fleet side style. And here they have the 50, 57 style Corvette sunken in tail lights off the side. So actually, if you're building a 55 Chevy fleet side, Keep these fenders in your mind because you could build these as, uh, or sorry, not the fleet side, the step side, the step side pickup. Keep these in mind when you build the step side pickup if you want to do it a bit custom, you know. Uh, now here we have the rolled pans and they're using the stock um, grill insert in the back here, of course, but they have these bullet nerfs in the front which cover the big holes left from where the bumper would go through on there. So it sort of gives it a rolled pan look. If you actually have a bit of uh, evergreen styrene, you could glue it into the backs of those and then fill over the gaps with putty and forget the bullet nerfs. Uh, anyway, that's just my thoughts. There's those um, uh, tires, pardon me, with the uh, custom hubcaps on there. You get a set of lake pipes. You get a tonneau cover, and you can actually, there's a, um, in the center of the tonneau cover, there's a little bit of a crack there. So you could bend this up, and they give you these hydraulic lifts that you glue under into your tailgate box, so that you can see the tools and things in the back. And you get a custom tailgate that's completely smooth and flat here. It doesn't have the raised Ford lettering. 
Although if you want, you could use the stock tailgate in there. It's all custom. There they have this custom gas cap, which is a spinner style, similar to the Corvette knockoff wheels of that era, about 1963-ish. And then this is a chrome club plaque that you can glue onto the back here. Car clubs are quite popular back in the day, so why not? And then you get these little uh, antennas for your radios that you can put through your your fenders. So that's a good look at the options for our truck here. And like I say, I'm going to use the Coca-Cola decals instead of the decals that come with this kit when I build up a Coca-Cola display. So look for that video coming soon. Now, without further ado, let's go down and check out what the plastic components look like. So the first part we're going to be looking at is our body here. And this is a great rendition of the 53 Ford pickup truck cab part of it. Now, it's molded in white, so it might be a little hard to pick up, but you can hear. Ooh. There's a uh, nice mesh in here for your radiator. Um, now, whoops. <laughs> if we uh, look underneath here, you'll see these buttons. Now, I, I would suggest removing these with a the number 16 hobby blade, which is the one I'm holding right here. There's two injector marks here and here, uh, mold marks actually, that will interfere with your frame alignment. So again, you can remove them by scraping them with a the number 16 hobby blade. Or in fact, you could use a sanding block here, sandpaper block. Actually, this would be a better way to do it. Go in here and sand those out. Now you can notice there's more of those mold marks down in here. And here. Oops. There we go. You can see them right by the manufacturer's mark underneath here. And those ones you cannot get the sanding block in there, so you will need your number 16 blade to scrape them down. Okay, but that being said, I don't know if you can see this too well. Yeah, tilted into the camera. So there's some nice engraved molding in here with the window winders. There's a little notch where your dashboard's going to hook into there. And now there's the part on the body for your gas filler cap. It's got the little door locks and keys for it. Windshield wipers molded to the body. And the little side vent here. Is there one on the other side? No, see there's not one on the other side. So this might have been a fresh air intake or something for the a heater. Now you'll notice that there's a bit of flash on here. And again you can remove that with your sanding block. And remember to get your, your um, seam lines removed with the number 11 hobby blade. This is a very bad version of a number 11 hobby blade. I need to replace them. But yeah, you can see some flash around here. That's a little hole for the rod for the hood. No, the horn. The horn, yes. Uh, nice engraving in here for the arrow. It's got all the um, nuts and bolts inside there on the fender wells. So some very good detailing on here. And uh, if you're adding in those antennas, you probably need to drill a hole under here. So I've got my drill there, just somewhere in there. Anyway, let's move the body out of the way. Here is the pickup truck bed. And again, we've got those mold marks down in here. There we go. Just gotta get the camera angle right with the white plastic. There's some nice wood graving wood paneling in there with the raw, the rails, pardon me. These will look good with uh, bare metal foil on them. You'll need to snip off this with some side cutters and again use your sandpaper. That nice wood grain goes underneath, which there's no mold marks under here. And uh, this is the part you're going to see underneath the frame. The two little pins there and some sunken down bits here and here. I do believe you uh, to dig those out for your bumper brackets. And then we have our frame here. 
Once again, this is nice. These little wings are part of the inner fender aprons for back there on the body. You get your gas can and this would be your battery box. Some very nice uh, rivets and detail in there. A little hard to see. Sorry, white plastic is very hard to film. <laughs> Apologies. And then be careful clipping that out right there because that's on your frame rails. Uh, and you will need some sandpaper and your hobby files just to remove those once you clip them off or saw them off actually be a better way to do it. Next up we have our nice 53 Ford hood. There's the stock bumpers without the holes in them and this is your tie rod end for underneath. Now if you tilt the hood up there you can see that emblem. Oops, I'll get my hand back a little shadow doesn't help, hurt. You can see there is the Ford emblem that they were talking about in the instructions and the hood ridge. And if we turn this upside down, you'll actually notice a bit of a texture under here. And then of course there's our mold buttons. And this is a little tab that sticks up for that spring for your hood. And under our bumpers we have the, the mounting locations and some more of those mold marks which again you can remove with your number 16 hobby blade just by carefully getting in there and uh, cross scraping and as you can see once we clip our hood off it does fit nice and tight into the front of the truck now we have the custom rear fenders these are the of course, 55 Chevy step side pickup truck style with the Corvette style inserts in there. Then we have our front grill area, the bench seat, the two piece rear axle, the front suspension, the leaf springs and the steering column, shock absorbers, and these neat little raising blocks. Or what they were, I think. Uh, as we turn this over, you'll notice again there's some of those. Oops. There's some of those mold marks, which again need to be taken out. There's some in there too. Uh, the leaf spring detail is quite nice on the front or underneath sides, whatever side this is. And uh, so there's your components there. Here's our sprue for our engine components. You actually get two engines on here. This one here, which is the Ford Flathead, and of course this one here, which is our DeSoto Fire Dome. So let's talk about the Flathead Ford components first. As you'll notice, the oil pan is molded in place on the engine block halves. When you glue these together, allow your glue to dry and then sand out your seam lines. Um, so yeah, this is because this is all going to be painted that Ford gray-green kind of color. The uh, flathead engine components are here, so you got your two radiator hoses, your fan, your cylinder heads, the intake manifold, uh, the exhaust crossover piece, there's one of the exhaust pipes there, your oil filter, your carburetor, your fuel line, and there's your pulleys there. And then on the DeSoto fire, oh, your, your uh, air cleaner here for the stock engine. And then we get into our DeSoto fire dome. So there is the intake fuel log for the individual carburetors. The engine block there. The crossover style wa um, radiator hoses. Your water pump front cover your fan belts, there's your exhaust pipes there, and here's the cylinder heads. These are the fuel injection um, intake components, and then there's your license plate sh shroud and your rear tail lights. Next up we get into our stock wheels, and here you can see the nice steel wheels there. You get five, one for the spare tire, 
These little rods here are actually plastic axles if you don't feel confident using the metal ones provided. Although I would say to use the metal ones because the plastic ones have a tendency to bend a little bit under the weight of the vehicle. The fire extinguisher, the scissor style jack, and there's the jack handle and crank. These are your rear brake drums. Now there's front brake drums here but they broke off in the box so I'll show those in a minute. There's your stock steering wheel and then I'll just turn these over so you can see the wheel backings here have a raised bit which will drop into there to fit tightly on the Firestone tires once we uh, assemble the whole thing together. And you'll notice a nice little hand grip detail on the back of the steering wheel. You'll be able to see that through the windshield. And here's the stray parts from our parts box, the things that kind of broke off the parts tree and rattled around in there. So here we have our Ford stock tailpipe. This has got the bend in it to get around the rear differential and to come up to the back of the vehicle. Here we have the magneto for the DeSoto fire dome. These are the rear brake drums. There's a tall collar right here on this one. This is the back side of the brake drums. And then this is the front side of the brake drums where the wheel is going to go in. And then these wheel backs here, they're for the Baby Moon hubcaps, which we'll see on a chrome tree. These are not included in the instruction sheet, but if you have some of the older instructions from AMT and whatnot, you will know that these are in fact valuable wheels for the custom version. And they've got these little buttons on this side. <laughs> anyway, there are no tires for these wheels in the kit, but I've built this many a time and this is the actual tire here. These are the Goodyear Polyglass GTs. Uh, they're a wide tire and you can see that tread pattern there. There's usually a web in here, but this one has been cut out. This is from my parts box, and these will in fact fit on there and be the right height for the moon hubcaps. So if you've built models over the years and you have these kicking around, that's your tire for it. Uh, if you are new to model building and you want these, keep these in your parts box. Uh, the more models you build eventually from AMT, the more models you build from AMT, eventually you will come across these things in droves. I've got like 70 of these, you know, sets of these tires, so they are out there. Anyway, that is your little tip of the week for these tires. And now here's a smaller parts tree. We have our dashboard. And there's some really nice detail in this instrument panel here. I know it's white plastic, it's very hard to see. Anyway, trust me. <laughs> uh, here we have our distributor cap for the Flathead Ford. There's our horn. These are the um, tailgate components where you're going to put your tailgate and have it latch up here. And these bottom holes are for your tail lights. Then this is the rolled pan for the rear of the truck. And here, they don't show these in any of the instructions. This came out a little bit later on, but this is in fact a mesh style grill insert, which would uh, go in and you could have this without any of the headlights or anything like that. Or you could glue this in and then put those canted uh, headlights with the grill bar in just as a backup thing. And here's our sprue for the service truck, as well as many of the other truck components. There's our drive shaft, our service bumpers with the holes in it, bumper brackets, the brace for the spare tire, which hooks up underneath, our exhaust pipes for the stock version, as well as the additional stock style muffler here for the custom. There's our two-way CB radio. Here's our smooth tailgate. The oxyacetylene tanks and two components. That there is the little tail light for the service truck. And then we have our firewall here. And now I'm just going to turn this over so you can see a bit of the detail. Let's turn it around as well. 
Okay, so here we have our radiator and it's also got the fan shroud on there. And then again, you'll notice the sinkholes mold marks on the tailgate. Those will have to be smoothed out with your sandpaper. There's some nice gauge detail on the oxyacetylene tanks. And again, we've got these buttons pretty much everywhere, but it's again the vintage of the kit and the way it was designed in the mold. Now we'll look at our final white part tree. This one is a little bit longer than I've got room accommodated on my camera stand. <laughs> but anyway, there is the stock fenders. Here's all our little tools molded on there, as well as the floor pedals and a license plate. Now here we've got our tailgate. This is the stock version with the two little bars in here and then Ford punched in on this side. The tonneau cover. And then here we have our interior with the running boards. And you can see this nice paneling in there. There's a gas pedal. A couple nice rivets in there. And these little things here are where the bench seat fits in. And then we can turn this over. And now, again, we've got the mold marks, much like on the stock or the custom version. And then here you can see the Ford lettering is actually sunk in. And of course we've got there. There's two pins here for aligning your front fenders on. And our tonneau covered. Now there's that crack that's right there. You can take your number 16 hobby knife and just push it down here and there. And then you can open this and bend it up a little bit. There's the little mounting points for those gas struts that would be holding this up. And then if we look here on our upside down of the running boards, there again is some of those mold marks and same on the tonneau cover, which will have to be removed with your number 16 hobby blade. But again, some very nice detail. There is a bit of a texture under there, which you could see up through the bottom of the frame when you turn this upside down. And here's my favorite component of all, the chrome tree. So right here we have that nice wildcat grill. There's our four carburetors, actually eight carburetors. Uh, the service lights there. There's our stock grill. Uh, the gas knockoff thing. <laughs> the Ford hubcaps, the stock ones, our air horns the intake cover for the DeSoto Fire Dome. There's the chrome valve covers, the chrome oil pan, pardon me, the two chrome air cleaners. Those are the Baby Moon wheels, hubcap wheels we're talking about that fit the uh, Goodyear polyglass tires here. The custom floor shifter, the gas struts for the tonneau cover, Mercury tail lights, the uh, mirror, the club plaque, the steering wheel, the two chrome shock absorbers, the welding torch, there's the uh, alternator for the Chrysler engine, the bumperettes for the front, the grill, the speaker grill, then we've got our Chrysler inspired front grill there, the light pipes, and then I'm just going to turn this over so we can see some of the other details here. Uh, where did they go? Somewhere on here, I think these are them. Those are chrome plated, they're the tail lights that are going into here. I never realized that until this model review actually, but you're supposed to paint the top of these with like to me a clear red and then scrape the chrome off of there on this side and then glue them in with the chrome and the rear the <laughs> red tail light I should say so as you can see there is let's just turn this back here there is some nice detail into that chrome grill and there's the stock Ford grill again there's a mesh molded in here, which is some really fine detail work. 
there's our uh, DeSoto Fire Dome chrome-plated valve covers. Woo! And uh, the Baby Moon hubcaps, as well as the Mercury Tail Light custom Mercury Tail Light uh, bezels, I guess. Our lake pipes here. You know, nice detail on all of this. Even the Chrysler has a bit of mesh inside the headlights so as to give it some very nice detail. So again, one of my favorite chrome pieces. So I thought I'd show these two together because they're really small parts trees. These are the re-released hubcaps that were in the original model kit of this back in the 1960s. And it's nice to see them return. As you can tell here, they have some nice detail to them. And then putting that down, here we have our windshield. And this is a very clear one. It was well packaged in the box. There's no scratches in it, which are uh, sort of a bane of earlier AMT kits of this truck. A nice rear glass. This will pop up underneath very nicely. Here you have the larger headlights for the stock version, and then they give you the four smaller headlights for the custom. Included in this kit are five tires, one for the spare, of course, and they are all printed with this nice white wall, which is a bonus from the factory, from AMT, I should say, round two. I've turned this tire upside down so that you can see the Firestone lettering printed on here. If you want to build a plain Jane type truck, you turn the white walls to the inside. Some of the hot rodders actually turned the white walls to the inside to have the black wall tire as well, which is kind of weird since you wanted to pay for the white walls. But there, there you can see the white wall in the center. So these are very nicely done on behalf of round two. And the final components in this model kit are the metal bits, which include the two axles and the hood hinge. Now you may be wondering why this looks so strange here. I'm leaving this in the bag for obvious reasons of it getting lost. So anyway, you get the two metal axles and our metal hood hinge. So before I turn this over, we have our decal sheet, and this is the back, and it gives the location points for all the decals that are on the decal sheet. This is, of course, for the Wildcat truck at the top. And uh, we've got these nice pinstripes and the locations for them. You're using the flat tailgate on here, so you can put the Wildcat decal on the back, and there's the actual cat itself on the tonneau cover. And down here is the custom welded front grille for Noah's Ark welding, which is kind of a cool touch. All right, so I'm going to turn the decal sheet over so you can see what these look like. And there it is there. So we've got a Noah's Ark welding on 221 West Pike Street, somewhere in Model Kit Land. There's the very nice pinstripes. There's some Ford parts and Firestone decals, Fram, Grant pistons, Champion spark plugs, STP additives. There's some, I think these are NHRA Valvoline. So these would be sort of on your service truck. And um, there's our Wildcat pinstriping for the custom, as well as these other nice pinstripes and our license plates. There's a nicely pinstriped 53 on there and uh, many, many other cool things that you could use on various other 50s pickup trucks. And our final addition in this model kit is the inclusion of the AMT Ford Mini Truck Box. This duplicates the box that comes with the kit and it is really cool, number 62 in the series. It gives you little instructions on how to put it together, but basically you score along here, cut out along those lines, score, 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 score across here, score across there, score this way, score that way, Martin scores AZ, and then you bend these all up and you glue it together and you should have a smaller scale reproduction of the box that this model came with.
And that concludes our look at the AMT 1953 Ford pickup truck. And wasn't that an amazing review? And I sure hope you enjoyed seeing what was in the 1953 Ford pickup truck by AMT, reissued again by Round 2. So, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed seeing this video. And pound that notification bell so that every time I open up a new model kit, you are the first one to see it. And until next time, I wish you great success on building your 1953 Ford pickup truck.